Hello, and welcome to our presentation on hearing conservation. This is brought to you by Kimberly Adams, Valeria Clock, Lauren Holdley, and Rachel Smith. We really hope you enjoy the informative session. It's important that we first understand how sounds are received and interpreted as hearing. This may be a review for some of you. The outer ear collects the sound waves and directs them into the external auditory canal. The ear canal then carries the sound waves inside to the eardrum. These sound waves then cause the eardrum to vibrate. The bones in the middle ear pick up vibrations from the eardrum. The bones in the middle ear also amplify the sound and send it on to the inner ear. The vibrations pass through to the inner ear setting the fluid inside the cochlea in motion. The tiny hair cells then turn the sound waves into electrical impulses. The auditory nerve sends these electrical impulses to the brain's central auditory cortex. There it will be interpreted as sound. Nerve cells are tuned to specific frequencies, both high and low. The base of the cochlea is sensitive to the high frequency sounds, like that of somebody screaming. And the tip of the cochlea is sensitive to low frequency sounds, like that of a drum. How sounds affect us every day. Going about our daily lives, we can come across many noisy situations. Symphonies, sporting events, working conditions, and leisure activities can all be sources of potentially loud sounds. Sound intensity is measured in decibels. In this chart, we will show common generalized environmental sources of sound that may take place in our everyday lives. An airplane takes off at around 120 decibels, Music can be around 110 to 120 decibels, whether projected from a symphony orchestra or a rock concert or played from an MP3 player or headphones. A motorcycle is about 95 decibels. A lawnmower can be a source of sound at 65 to 95 decibels. A household blender is around 80 decibels. An alarm clock can be at 65 to 80 decibels. Standard conversation is about 60 decibels. A rain shower is around 50 decibels. And a quiet place for reading may be around 40 decibels. Although there are many factors that can affect if hearing loss occurs, intensity, perceived as the loudness of a sound, and duration, how long our ears are exposed to a sound, are some very important elements to consider when looking to protect our hearing. Without any hearing protection, hazardous noise levels can cause damage very quickly. Moderate, potentially hazardous sounds can only be withstood for a continuum of short durations of time. And softer sounds may be listened to for long periods of time. These everyday sounds can have long-ranging effects on the function of our ears. Cochlea are pictured here at various stages of life to illustrate what the damage may look like. The first cochlea on the left is that of a 17-year-old girl who has a normal functioning cochlea with all receptors intact. The next image from the left shows a 76-year-old man with low noise exposure. Here you can see less receptors, but they are still intact. The effects shown here are typical for an aging male. In comparison, the last picture on the right shows a 59-year-old man who has been exposed to high levels of noise, possibly for long periods of time. As you can see, the receptors and the cochlea are both damaged. It is important to notice how much worse the damage is than a man who is 17 years old older. Noise-induced hearing loss 
is a hearing impairment that can occur from sudden loud sounds, but often is the result of repeated exposure to noise over many years. A temporary threshold shift can occur during and after loud events with intensity levels over 80 decibels. For example, someone may go to a concert or a very loud sporting event and afterwards he or she may notice that his or her hearing is impaired for a short while. But eventually, sound sensitivity is perceived as returning to regular levels. Noise-induced hearing loss can also be permanent. Tinnitus, which can be described as hearing a ringing or buzzing that is not caused by outside stimuli, can occur during and after exposure to sound as well and can also be temporary or permanent. But noise-induced hearing loss can also be preventable. Prevention is key. So what is hearing conservation? Hearing conservation is the prevention of hearing loss from environmental elements that can occur in occupational or non-occupational settings. In relation to noise, hearing conservation involves the process of using strategies, such as walking away from or avoiding very loud sounds and turning down the volume on headphones and earbuds, and protective devices, such as wearing noise reduction equipment like safety earmuffs and earplugs while around loud sounds. Occupational noise exposure is exposure to loud noises in the workplace. It is so prevalent that about 30 million people in the United States are exposed to hazardous noise levels in an occupational setting and is also recognized as the most common occupational health concern in the United States for more than 25 years. Every year, thousands of workers suffer from hearing loss in the workplace, which can be preventable. The U.S. alone spends $242 million dollars on workers' compensation for hearing loss disability. Being exposed to high levels of noise in the workplace can result in many consequences. One being, if exposed to high levels of noise, temporary or even worse, permanent hearing loss can occur. Loud noise can also cause physical and psychological stress, reduce productivity, it can also interfere with communication and concentration, it also attributes to workplace accidents and injuries because warning signals are harder to hear and adds to psychological and social isolation. Occupational Safety and Health Administration, also known as OSHA, was created because of the Occupational Safety Health Act of 1970. It was created to ensure that working conditions for both men and women were safe and healthful. OSHA sets and enforces safety standards, provides training, outreach, education, and assistance for all workers. In 1981, OSHA implemented the Hearing Conservation Program in order to protect all workers from loud noise exposures. Here is a list of the OSHA noise limitations. OSHA's limitations are based on workers' time-weighted average, TWA, over an eight-hour day. OSHA's noise permissible exposure limit, PEL, is 90 dBA for all workers for an eight-hour day as well. OSHA uses 5 dBA exchange rate as its standard. Exchange rate when the noise level is increased by 5 dBA, which is the amount of time a person can be exposed to a certain noise level to receive the same dose is cut in half. As previously discussed, OSHA implemented the Hearing Conservation Program in 1981 and was intended to prevent initial occupational hearing loss, preserve and prevent remaining hearing, and provided workers with the knowledge and hearing protection devices so hearing loss didn't occur. This program's goal is to have workers exposed to a time-weighted average noise level of less than 85 dBA over an 8-hour work shift. Because of these programs, employers are required to provide free annual hearing exams and hearing protection aids, 
provide training and conduct evaluations of the competence of the hearing protectors. Noise controls are the first line of defense against excessive noise exposure. These controls should aim to lessen the hazardous exposure to the point where the risk to hearing is eliminated or minimized. This picture shows the hierarchy of noise controls, which are elimination, which is the removal of the noise source from the workplace, substitution, replace the noise source if possible, engineering controls, which is reducing the noise levels via engineering and machinery, administrative controls, which is changing work practices to reduce duration of exposure to noise levels, and PPE, which is protective hearing and hearing protective equipment. Let's take a look at what some companies today are using. Many companies have found success with certain products and programs to help protect their workers. Dual hearing protection provides an earplug and muffled earphones. These are pictured here on the bottom right. The VeriPro system is one that aids in properly fitting earplugs by an expert on job sites. In the picture, you can see how not to use earplugs on the left and how to have them correctly fitted in the ear canal on the right. Hybrid push-in style earplugs help to provide more protection through a more secured fit. Apps can help workers to maintain safety regulations and ensure they are using protective equipment properly. Many companies regulate the amounts of time their workers can spend on their shifts being exposed to loud noises. They also provide quiet areas for their employees to have breaks. In-ear dosimetry is a high-tech, smart way for workers to monitor sounds coming to the eardrum to ensure they remain at safe levels. In addition to occupational noise exposure causing a hearing loss, individuals also have to worry about recreational noise exposure. We often don't think about it, but there are many recreational activities that can cause a noise-induced hearing loss. This type of noise exposure can affect individuals of any age. According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, approximately 16% of teens have experienced a hearing loss due to exposure to harmful noises from recreational activities. There are many activities that can result in recreational noise exposure. These include concerts, listening to music with headphones or earbuds that are too loud, using power tools such as lawnmowers, chainsaws, or leaf blowers, exposure to loud vehicles such as snowmobiles, motorcycles, and airplanes, shooting guns, and using fireworks. As illustrated by the previous table in the previous slide, a loud rock concert can be between 110 and 120 decibels, a gunshot can be anywhere between 140 to 170 decibels at its peak, and headphones have a loudness level of about 100 decibels. All of these loudness levels are dangerous when one is exposed to them for a prolonged amount of time. The severity of a hearing loss depends on the length, proximity, and intensity of the noise exposure. As stated earlier, the hearing loss can be temporary or permanent. The following are some signs that noises are at a dangerous loudness level. If sounds are muffled and difficult to hear, if you have trouble understanding others, if you need to raise your voice in order to be heard by others, if you experience ringing or buzzing in your ears, or if you have a feeling of pressure or blockage in your ears, then the noise is probably too loud. In general, if a sound is greater than 85 decibels, then it is possible that the noise can cause a temporary or permanent hearing loss.
The key to remember is that hearing loss from recreational noise exposure is entirely preventable. There are many preventative measures we can take to prevent hearing loss from occurring. If you think you are engaging in an activity that involves loud noise, you can wear earplugs or earmuffs to reduce the noise exposure. If possible, you can distance yourself from the loud noise. Also, when listening to music with earbuds or headphones, do not turn it up to extremely high levels. Instead, try your best to keep the volume at a reasonable level. Finally, if you think you may have been exposed to harmful noise, it is wise to have your hearing tested at your audiologist. Your audiologist will be able to make any recommendations to treat any hearing loss that may have occurred. So, just remember, noise-induced hearing loss is 100% preventable. This picture is a good one to remember. It lists the key preventative measures to take to protect your hearing. Turn it down, protect your ears, walk away, and limit exposure.